game server management. It's one of those things that game server hosts never tell you about. Well in this video I'm going to show you how to install the Pterodactyl panel so you can easily start your own server host. Now to start off here we will be using an install script for Pterodactyl to speed up the process and make things easier to install. Secondly we will install what is known as the wings but I'll make that in a separate video so just be on the lookout for, the, for that video and uh, you know maybe click subscribe and click the notification bell and, and like the video so you don't miss that. Thanks. Anyway, let's get started. So I'm going to list uh, requirements to start the Pterodactyl panel, uh, just so uh, you know that you're getting the right things. If you're buying a VPS from somewhere, you know where to buy the VPS um, and how much uh, RAM or CPU you need. So number one, uh, you're going to need a VPS that has at least one core and one gig of RAM. Um, and I would probably say about 50 gigs of storage. You can get this from places like uh, Contabo, Oracle Cloud, Amazon Web Services, uh, so, something like that. Number two, you're also going to have to have a bit of experience with Linux in case something goes wrong. Uh, if you if something gets broken somehow, um, it's always good to have a bit of experience with the Linux command line. Um, you will also need to have access to ports 80 and 443. Uh, port 80 is uh, web, or like HTTP, and 443 is HTTPS. Uh, which is for encryption, which we'll set up later. Um, this is just so you can access the web interface later, so we can actually start it. Uh, with that out of the way, let's jump onto our PC and get started. Okay, so what we want to do is we actually want to come across to here, and we want to use this here. This is the Wilhelm Pritz. I don't know how to say your name, but I'm going to say that's about right. Wilhelm Pritz. V Vil v yeah, okay. Anyway, go to this link, I'll leave it in the description, um, and come down to here, um, you'll see there's like supported uh, panel uh, operating systems, um, and then down here there's a use the installation script. Um, so just pointing out, shout out to this guy, um, use his install script, it's super easy. Um, on the other hand of this, uh, we've got the install script right here that we can run. Um, I also forgot to mention that you don't, this is optional, you do... Uh, you, you can use a domain if you want to, and I say the best place to get one uh, would probably be from uh, Freenom, if you just want to get a free domain to test this out with. Um, personally, I'll be using Freenom, and I'll just be using a domain I already have on Cloudflare, so we don't have to set one up. But Freenom domains are free, you can get a .tk or .ml domain completely for free. So with that out of the way, uh, let's get started with our installation. So I specifically am going to be using Amazon Web Services. Okay, so we're on the AWS Management Console. Now, you can create an account for free. You'll have 12 months of free services. This is exactly what I'm running it off. Um, so we're going to be running it on the 12 months of free services, which will be fine. That's more than enough to uh, install Pterodactyl and get it working. So you want to go up to Services up here. And you want to go to Compute under Compute here. Uh, you want to select EC2, and under EC2 here, you actually want to make a brand new instance. So you want to select uh, instances running, or you can select instances, it doesn't really matter. I just go for instances running because it runs better for me. And you want to select the launch instances tab. So it'll say choose an Amazon machine AMI. We're going to choose uh, Ubuntu Server 2004 LTS. Make sure it's uh, under 64-bit uh, times 86, not 64-bit ARM. So go ahead and select that. Next, it's going to ask you about your instance type. Uh, for us to make this to to make this work, uh, we're going to go with the T2 Micro, which is uh, one core, one gig of RAM, and you get low to moderate network network performance, which will be more than enough. So we can configure the instance details. Uh, you can you can. Uh, I'm not going to do anything here. Next thing, we're going to add storage. Now you get uh, free to free to customers are eligible of up to 30 gigs of SSD storage. So we're going to give it the full 30 gigs because why not? Uh, next, we'll add. Uh, actually, no, we'll make this uh, make it 15 because we'll we'll make some wings on the same thing. So 15 gigs. Um, you can add some tags. I'm not going to. And next, we're going to configure the security groups. So this is uh, port forwarding. So what you want to do, right, I'm going to go add rule, you want to go down to um, uh, HTTP, there you go, 
and add another rule and add it for HTTPS, which is right here. And that's done. You're now you've now port forwarded. So click on review and launch. Uh, you'll get this. Uh, you get this message. You want to leave it open to the world because I mean you're accessing a web server. You want everyone to be able to access the web server. But uh, if you're not and you just want want it for yourself, then you can obviously set this up by yourself. But I'm not going to show you how to do that. Uh, click on launch. Now it's going to ask you about a key pair. So we're going to create a new key pair and the key pair name. We'll put it under uh, pterodactyl uh, tutorial. Click on download key pair. It's going to uh, download my key pair. I'm going to go ahead and just click download. And now we'll just click on launch instances. Great, you can see that your instances are now launching. So now we've got to wait for it to become online and accessible. Okay, so our instance is now up and running. So we should be good to go. Uh, now you can click on connect, um, which pulls up this window. Now you can sign in uh, as Ubuntu using um, EC2 instance connect. Uh, I'm going to go with SSH client. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and copy the example. This one right here. I'm going to go ahead and click copy. I'm going to open up my command prompt. And I'm just going to enter that in. Uh, actually, first, sorry, I probably should have done this first. Um, after you've opened up your command prompt, you want to go CD downloads. And then you want to paste in that um, the example that you got down here. So now you want to click on enter. And now it should connect to your instance. So you'll type in yes, and it will now add it, and you should connect. Bang, you're connected. Just like that. Now what we're going to do is we are going to set this up. So what we're going to do is this install script here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this, this, uh, this, this uh, script here, or copy this link. And now you want to do uh, sudo bash. And then you want to, and then you just want to paste in that link. You're going to get this. We want to install the panel, so we're going to click on zero. Now, just basically skip through this. Uh, it doesn't really matter. This is just setting up like my SQL. Um, now, it's going to say provide the email address that will be used to configure Let's Encrypt and Pterodactyl. I'm going to put in my email address. Email address for initial account. Um, it doesn't really matter. I'll put in my email. Username, uh, admin. First name. Oh, okay, fine. Put in my name then. Last name. Put in my name. Uh, and then put in a password. So any password will really do. And now you want to set the FQDN for this panel. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to Cloudflare. And I'm going to go ahead and pick off one of my domains so that we can uh, start making this. All right, so we're going to be using freedomconnect.tk. This is, again, a free nom domain. Um, you can get this for free and just add it to Cloudflare, which is exactly what I've done. Now, what we're going to do is you don't have to add a... Well, you don't have to add a record, but... Oh, no, sorry, you do. I'm an idiot. I, I'm losing my mind. So you want to create it for panel.freedomconnect.tk uh, and the IPv4 address will be the IP address of your instance, which for me is this IP address right here. Go ahead and paste it in and then instead of having it proxied, we want to go DNS only as we're going to give ourselves our own uh, SSL certificate. As I've just actually, I've personally, I've found it to be easier than using uh, Cloudflare's proxy. So we'll go ahead and save that and once it's saved, we can go back across to the instance and for some reason, I've been reset. Why? 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 Okay, we're back. Uh, so now it's asking us to set the FQDM, which is going to be panel.freedomconnect.tk. Go ahead and press enter on that. Now it's going to ask us, do we want to configure the UFW? We do want to configure UFW. We'll let it do that. It's going to ask us, do you want to automatically configure HTTPS in the script? Yes, we do. And now it's going to ask us if we want to perform an HTTPS request on the domain. We're going to go yes, resolving DNS, and DNS verified. So now we want to continue with the installation, and now we just have to sit back and wait for it to finish installing. So I'll be back once this is finished the installation, and we're good to go.
Okay, so once you see this screen here, you're gonna, so it's gonna ask you basically, do you want to accept the terms of service of Let's Encrypt? We're just gonna go A for agree. And it's gonna attempt to obtain a certificate, and it is deploying the certificate, and bang, you've got a certificate, and it is now done. Your panel should be accessible from this domain. Thank you for using the script. So now, come across to here and do panel.freedomconnect.tk. You can see, here we are, Pterodactyl. So now if we type in admin and then the password, so the account that we just set up, and go log in, and just like that, you have installed the Pterodactyl panel. Now there's there's wondrous things you can do with this. Uh, you can set up the wings, which we'll do in the next video. Uh, but basically, that's it. Uh, you've set up the Pterodactyl panel, and uh, that's as far as I'll take you in this video. But in the next video, I'm going to show you how to install the Pterodactyl wings so you can actually, like, you can get proper servers running on here. So that's it for this video. Subscribe, like, comment what else I should do with Pterodactyl, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.